Manis, and you're listening to the You'll Hear It podcast. Daily jazz advice coming at you, coming at you solo today because Peter's in Europe and I'm here in St. Louis. Uh, I think he's going to be checking in a little bit next week uh, with his own versions on the road of the You'll Hear It podcast. But this week, I'm going to take the helm at the piano with some solo versions, and I want to do something. Uh, a little bit different. I want to do a brief series of basic jazz theory called How Does That Work? And today is our first edition, and this will be all about altered dominant chords. How does that work? I want to tell you. Uh, so altered dominant chord might be something that, uh, a term that you've heard before. Maybe you know all about them. If so, you can uh, press uh, next to the next one. But uh, if you want a refresher on them and how to use them and how to create them, uh, you're at the right place. So, uh, well, let's start with what is a dominant chord. So a dominant chord is, is a seventh chord. So if we're in the key of C, you would see C7, right? It's that sound. Now we call these dominant chords because they usually uh, lead to the tonic, right? They're this kind of the second strongest chord in any given key, and they resolve just beautifully to the one of a key, whether that's major or minor. Uh, so uh, a dominant seventh chord is is built off of the root of the fifth, fifth degree of the Ionian scale, for instance, in the in the major key. So if we're in the key of F, it's C, E, G, and then B flat, right? Because we're in the key of F. Now in jazz, we like to throw in uh, extensions on most of our chords. So we're not satisfied with this. We like to add in the ninth. And then we like to go even further with the eleventh. Except on the dominant chord, we like to sharp it. This is our first altered dominant chord. Because F sharp is not in the key of uh, F major, obviously. It's not in the C mixolydian scale. Right? Which is what we've built this on so far. We've built it on the mixolydian scale. Right? And so when we add the 11th, the sharp 11th, now we're out of that sound and it's an altered dominant because it's altered from its original scale. We also like to add the 13. So here's the natural 13. Now often you hear this very voicing. C, E, B flat, we leave out the fifth completely. Nine, D, sharp 11, F sharp, and 13, A. All right, this is called a C7 sharp 11 or C13 sharp 11 if you want to get very, very specific. But oftentimes you'll see C7 sharp 11 and it's perfectly great to play this. All right? Um, so within any altered dominant um, chord, basically any of the extensions, the 9th, the 11th, or the 13th, can be altered. Um, the ninth can go either way, sharp or flat. So here's what a, a C7 sharp nine sounds like. You've heard that before, right? This is a really uh, interesting chord because you have both like the E and the E flat, right? The major third, minor third, only it's the sharp nine. Now you can't have a E flat in the C7 and call it a sharp nine unless you have an E natural somewhere in the chord. If not, it's just a minor chord because that is just the third, right? So you have to have, uh, for it to be an E7 sharp nine, you have to have the E natural in there somewhere so that it's a dominant chord. And you've heard this all the Jimi Hendrix, but especially in jazz, you know, Duke Ellington loved these chords. Um, so that's the sharp nine. Now you can also have the flat nine, right? So C, C, E, B flat, and D flat. Um, now we can add the 13 to this and the sharp 11. And this is a C13 sharp 11 flat nine. Now you're saying, Adam, why would you ever use that? Well, this is built off of the half hold diminished scale, which is a great scale to use going to your one. So this C7 flat nine sharp 11 thir with a natural 13, C, E, B flat, D flat F sharp A is just a really great altered dominant chord and scale off that half hole, half step, whole step, starting on C, going to F. Right? Sounds great. You've heard that sound a million times. 
very common. C7, flat 9, sharp 11 with a natural 13. And it sounds more complicated than it is, really. It's just those are the altered extensions, right? The 9th, the, thir the 11th, and the 13th. 13th is the only one that's natural. The 11th is sharp, and the 9th is flat. Okay, another uh, altered dominant that we can do is uh, the sharp 9, flat 13. Right? So pianists often think of this as like an A flat triad over C7. We have C, E, B flat, and then like you could put an A flat triad over there. It sounds just great. Now this is based on the altered scale, which is based off the seventh degree of a D flat melodic minor. Uh, easy way to think of it is the melodic minor from a half step above your root, your C. So D flat melodic minor starting on C. C, D flat, E flat, E natural, G flat, A flat, B flat, C. Right? So this is, this chord is called the sharp nine uh, flat 13, but it's based off of the altered scale. And it's close to our last, our final altered dominant, and really the most uh, kind of crunchy one, which is the C7 altered. Now the altered is all of the altered extensions. So we have, uh, and it's based of, again off of the altered scale. So we have flat nine, sharp nine, sharp 11, flat 13. All those in any combination. So when you see C7 alt, that's what that means. It means that all of those upper extensions, the 9th, the 11th, and the 13th, are altered. The 9th is both flatted and sharped, the 11th is sharped, and the 13th is flatted. By the way, the 9th is the only one that can be both flatted and sharped. The 11th is almost always sharped, and the 13th is almost always flat. If the 13th was sharped, it'd just be the dominant 7, so when I'm an altered dominant chord, it would make sense to have two B flats in there. You already have it. It's represented. So that's altered dominants. How do they work? Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Go to the You'll Hear It blog to check out all of our free content. And go to openstudiojazz.com to check out all of our full courses. We just released uh, Friday our new Jazz Piano Technique course where Peter Martin and I guide you through. Uh, that's a bell for the release of that course. We guide you through f uh, four weeks of guided practice sessions. We practice with you to get your chops up. Uh, it's only been three days, but I'm sure it's massively popular already. So go check that out. Go to openstudiojazz.com. And until tomorrow, you'll hear it.